onto what we all probably came to see, which is, of course, the reptiles. Now, reptiles are my favourite animals in the world, but if we're going to talk about reptiles, we need to know exactly what a reptile actually is. And uh, this particular one here would happily eat a funnel web spider any day of the week. And it's a very iconic Australian reptile. Now, reptiles have scaly skins, and they are what we call an ectothermic animal, or they are cold-blooded. I'm sure you've heard the term cold-blooded before. But that means that reptiles are not very good at creating their own internal body heat. What they have to do is use the environment around them to heat themselves up and gain the majority of their energy. Unlike us as mammals, what we do is we eat a whole bunch of food throughout the day, burn up the energy from that food, create heat in our body, and we don't have to think about it. Do you? Oh, awesome. That is a shingle bag, exactly right. And it means these guys can live in some very dry, harsh places where there's not a lot of food, not a lot of water, because they are getting most of that energy from the sun. That's why in Australia here we have so many reptiles, particularly lizards, as you move in towards the centre of the country, because it's very dry, very hot, and these guys do absolutely amazing there compared to some of the mammals that would be at the same size. And of course that's where this one comes from, so this is what we call a shingleback lizard. These guys have a lot of different common names. Uh, some people call them a pine cone lizard, a sleepy lizard, a uh, bog eye, a bobtail. But my favourite of the common name is actually a two-headed lizard. They get that name because their tail on this end is very, very similar looking to their head. That's not any mistake at all. It is for a few couple of specific reasons. And she's uh, going to push out something in a second, I reckon. And pop you down there. And the first reason is, again, living in that desert environment, uh, when they can get a bit of food or a bit of water, they're actually going to store as much of that in the tail as possible. The other reason for that tail is uh, what she's kind of demonstrating now. This is about full speed for a shingleback. So you can imagine she doesn't have any real good re uh, way to actually outrun a predator or defend herself in the wild. So you can imagine a dingo, a bird of prey, something's going to come after her and uh, she's not going to be able to run away. So what she can do instead is try and confuse that predator with that tail. Now. Because it looks so similar to the head, a predator is typically going to try and crush the head. But with this one, they have a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Sometimes they'll wiggle that little tail and pretend it's their head, make the predator go for that. And uh, when they do, because they have legs on the side of their bodies, it means they can swing around pretty fast, bite the predator on the nose, on the ear, anywhere they can grab onto. And because of these big jaw muscles here, they have a very strong crushing bite. They'll latch on for a few minutes at a time. Dingo is going to be writhing around in pain, and uh, it's going to be a pretty horrible experience. They'll release, drop back to the ground, waddle away, and the predator will say, too much trouble, I'm not going to actually go after you again. Now, they're not only strange in their appearance, they're very strange when it comes to their reproduction. They're one of the only reptiles in the world we know of that actually finds a partner and mates for life. Now, each spring season rolls around, a male will find a female, they'll follow her around for a few months, they might have a baby or two, then they'll separate during the winter months. The next spring rolls around, those same two animals will find each other, and uh, they can tell each other apart based on their smell, their coloration, the way they put their tongue. And uh, they'll repeat that process again, year in, year out. And uh, there's been some documented cases of some pairs being faithful to each other for over 30 years in the wild. Which is pretty unheard of in the reptile world. Most reptiles will typically uh, go for whatever's moving. They're not too fussed about their partners, but these guys are very, very sentimental indeed. Now, it doesn't stop there either. Their babies are quite different as well. A close relative to these guys, the blue tongue lizard. They live on the east coast here. They have about 20 or so babies at a time. Very, very small. Most of them spread out into the environment. Majority get picked off before adulthood. Only the strongest survive. These guys are the complete opposite. They'll have one or two babies at a time, and a baby shingle back can be absolutely monstrous. It can be about 60% of the size of mum at birth, which is a painful day for mum, but it means... She's invested all those resources into those one or two babies and uh, they come out as a small adult, ready to go, totally self-sufficient from day one and uh, it works really, really well for them. You head a few hours inland from here, you start to see these guys waddling all over the roads and uh, doing very well for themselves in that harsh environment. Now that's your shingleback, one of the cutest types of reptiles we have here at the park, I reckon.